So, I mean, the Frag Force thing is it's playing games and raising funds for the kids. That is Siebert Bacher, one of the founders and organizers of Frag Force. I'm Josh Burke, a developer evangelist at Salesforce, and here on the Salesforce Developer Podcast, you'll hear stories and insights from developers for developers. Today, we sit down not just with Siebert, but two other organizers, Paulson McIntyre and Mike Parker, who thinks of the number of Michaels in his life just goes by Parker. And Frag Force is a volunteer organization that started here at Salesforce that raises money for children via gaming streams and events. And we started at the beginning, which was a technically challenging first event. Uh, it really started off of a one-off conversation. Gary came up to my desk, Gary, and said, hey, have you guys heard of Extra Life? Us being engineers, the first thing we do is Google it because none of us had any idea what it was. Look it up, find out this this uh, Children's Miracle Network program gets gamers to pledge to play games, you know, marathon games, and raise funds. So it's, like, so it's like a walkathon, except game playing instead of walking. I don't like the outside, I like this idea. <laughs> Stick to the core. Yeah. That conversation, as we spitballed it, said, you know, we should, we should do this, we should make a team. Uh, spitballed names, came up with Frag Force as a name, created the team right then and there. Six months later, we had our first event because it took us that long to figure out approvals the first time. And Frag Force would kind of indicate that this was back in the day when we were kind of naming everything Star Force. So when, when about was the first event? The first event would have been November 2015. The team was formed March, April 2015. And was that just the three of you? That was actually neither of these two. Ah. <laughs> neither of them were involved in the very first meeting. That was me and some of the other guys around my desk. A big leader, big person helping lead it was Paul Eldridge, who's our chief extrovert officer. <laughs> If you've ever met Paul, you'll know exactly why we call him that. Gotcha. I have good pictures of him to go along with it. <laughs> is he like one of the external facing staff? No. No, he's just, he is a very loud, gregarious guy. He also acts on the side and you can see that in his life and his behavior. Gotcha. I've got a picture of myself standing next to him dressed as Gaston, which okay. was just Paul turned up to 11. Nice. We might have to link to that in the show notes. So what was that first event like? What was what were some of the hurdles to getting it up and running? Oh, I mean, the first obvious one was, let's do this in the office. Mm -hmm. And then it was, who do we even ask to do that? I mean, we, we, it took us a while just to find, you know, who is the right person to give approval to use the office during the off hours for employees and non-employees. Mm -hmm. Then there was the network. Then there was the network, which um, it's like, oh, how do we get internet? We can't just, you know, use the corporate network. We'll get blocked immediately doing that. So we ended up using a Wi-Fi bridge between the office and Paul's uh, apartment next door, actually. But back up a moment. I think I know the answer to this question, but why would you get kicked off the corporate network? Because we're, our personal computers aren't authorized devices. Right. And so your MAC address wouldn't have been allowed oh, on it in the first no. place. Okay. So how close is your apartment to the office? Uh, Paul's apartment was literally across the street. <laughs> so the point to point in time, I was probably going about 300, 400 feet in a straight line. The attenuation through the windows was pretty bad, though. It wasn't friendly to Wi-Fi at all. Well, that's why we ended up putting it on a tripod outside the front door. Weren't the walls just a little bit better, though, than the windows, I mean? Uh, we ended up putting it outside the door just so that we didn't have to deal with that, either one of those as an issue. <laughs> yeah, true. <laughs> we, we have pictures of Paul with a, literally a green laser pointer on the end of the antenna pointing it at, his, at the balcony of his apartment. To get it as dead on as possible. Yeah. <laughs> and what was the game? What, what were you playing? Anything and everything. I mean, Extra Life is very non-discriminatory about, about any gaming, mm -hmm. any game, any type, anywhere. So, I mean, if, if you just want to play games on your phone, that's fine. If you don't want to play any computer games, just want to play board games, perfectly fine. No problems. Our first event was mostly computers with a little bit of board games. And how did that, like, did that Wi-Fi pose any challenges when it comes to things like latency, getting the stream out, et cetera? That was before we ever started even thinking about streaming. Gotcha. So Paul had an, uh, I want to say an 80 megabit fiber connection. Yeah, that sounds about we right. we were maxing out. Yeah, a bunch of gamers, a bunch of computer gamers anyway on one connection. We regularly push 500 to a gigabit during install time. So then what's the, um, I guess, what's the software layer involved in that? Like, how do people, that for that first event, how did people know what you were gaming and how did they get involved in the marathon aspect of it? Uh, we had all the computers in a single large conference room. 
which we did blow the circuit breaker on at one point. <laughs> that was one of our big lessons learned from the first event was extension cords to other circuits. Gotcha. And also find out where the circuit breaker is on the map. The locked room, we don't have access to it. <laughs> we had to call in the building engineer on a Saturday. <laughs> yeah, that wasn't fun for him. Uh, he was really good about it. Yeah, he was. He was really awesome about it. He has been for all of the uh, weekend calls on for Frag Force. <laughs> he probably has you on speed dial now or the other way around. No, we didn't <laughs> have to call him in for power after the first event. Gotcha. We learned our lesson well. Got it. Okay. So but everyone was in the same room. So it was really just, hey, who wants to play this? Or does anybody want to play this with me? And that would just really ad hoc. I mean, that's kind of how we do it now. And how does that sync back up to Extra Life itself? Uh, well, during the event, we had people, you know, donating themselves, talking mm -hmm. to family and friends, getting some donations. We ended up getting about 7,000 in donations in that first 24-hour event, which completely blew our expectations out of the water. I, I was going to say, it sounds like you've had some hardware challenges to get to that point, but what was your expectation level for, like, donations raised? We were expecting three to 5,000 for the year. Oh, Wow. So when we went up 7,000 in the one event, it was like, well, our expectations are wrong in a good way. <laughs> yeah. and, and was that just you got more attraction from people itself or were people giving more money than you expected? Like, what do you think that uh, lift was from? More giving more money than expected. And then a little bit of the attraction, too, because it was a completely novel thing. It was new for everyone in the office. So that definitely helped, too. And how has it been expanding the concept out? Uh crazy <laughs> <laughs> what was the looking... first movement to so, to something new outside of your office well we looked in volunteer force and said hey the portland office has a bunch of uto hours doing extra life we should talk to them so I mean, it, was, it was really just to reach out to them you know kind of a hey did you guys do this thing too maybe we should join forces under this common umbrella so we, we did we found out they had raised eight thousand dollars in their event Oh, wow. How did the exercise start getting involved? Was it kind of organic through things like Power of Us? Or was it people uh, people getting involved in, from a, like a Danish point of view and then saying, hey, I'm a gamer. I want to be involved in this too. A uh, little of A, little B. Um, the biggest one was February 2016. So just after we've had our event in November, we'd met up with the Portland guys. Um, we actually got a chance to present in Parker's All Hands about what we've done. Just because, you know, the amount of that we'd raised and the amount of ETO that we had, it was a little was special. So we, you know, asked and we got permission to present during the all hands. And that's where we really started the whole idea of, hey, if you're interested in doing this kind of thing, reach out to us here. And from that, especially, we got interest from Dublin, Atlanta, Singapore, San Francisco as well. So, I mean, that one was definitely one of the bigger ones. And then... Now, because we're kind of really established, people looking and chatter for charity or extra life stuff see our name and pop up and they reach out to us. What has that been like? Like just from like an organizational point of view, how how more complex has it gotten over the years? Oh, incredibly. I mean, it, I mean, our first event, you know, it took us six months to figure out approvals. Our second event, it was, oh, we know who to ask for approvals. Let's ask if we can use the corporate network, if we can you know, put our router and say, give us Internet and nothing else. So that was a whole other ball game, which once we got that approved, made setting up events a lot simpler. Because now we've got these devices that we can plug in and they just get internet and they're, you know, blocked from all other access. And then we can use our significantly more bandwidth heavy fat pipes from the offices. Cool. Let's dig into some of the games a little bit and maybe let's go go around the circle a little bit. Like, what are your, some of your current favorites that, that you like to play for Frag Force? V, 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 V. Um, I've been playing some uh, Baba's U and uh, TIS 100, but I think my favorite at Frag Force events is probably uh, whatever variant of Unreal Tournament people are playing. What is the current variant of Unreal Tournament? Uh, it's, just four, called, it's just called Unreal Tournament. Yeah, but it, I think it's four technically. I don't mind some of the old Game of the Year ones, that, one of the originals. 2004 still has servers up. Yeah. And let's face it. Amazing. Now, let's face it, we all like Ant's particular favorite project. Ah, Xenotic, which is an open source Unreal type game. What's it called again? Uh, Xenotic, X O N O T I C. Gotcha. Parker? Ah, uh, God, I play all <laughs> kinds of stuff. Is there any one particular game? No. Uh, most recently, we've been playing a lot of Heroes mm -hmm. of Hammerwatch. Heroes of Hammerwatch, I should say. 
And that's because Sebrin and I play on Tuesdays and Thursdays. We just started playing Satisfactory, which is basically like a three-dimensional Factorio. And we went exploring the map yesterday, and we'll probably do more of that Don't tomorrow. forget the dying repeatedly. <laughs> we, we died a few times along the way. I was, oh, that's a big creature, and it just uh, killed me. Mm. Because you guys stream a lot outside of Frag Force, is that right? Mostly for Frag Force. Um, we okay. stream outside of events. Got it. Um, on the Frag Force channel, Parker streams every Tuesday, Thursday evening, 5 to five Sundays. to 8 p.m. Eastern. I stream with him, so we're, we're always playing the same game. And then, like, mm-hmm. Bob from the Indianapolis office streams 8 to 10 p.m. Eastern on Tuesdays and That's Thursdays. Mark. Mark, yes, you're right. Words are hard. Ben out of San Francisco streams on Mondays and Wednesdays with his what he refers to as nostalgia blindness. He fires up old games that he likes to play. And then we also have a Ravnica Dungeons and Dragons campaign that's been running on Sunday evenings. All right. So let's talk about that angle of board gaming and tabletop gaming and role-playing gaming. Like like when it is a Frag Force event, how do people how can people get involved from that from like a donor point of view? Um, a big one, I think one of the most successful things that happened is um Dave or Imaginos does a board games with a buy-in pot. Where, you know, take the number of players, take $50, whatever the divisor is, to be, add up to $50. Everyone ponies up that for the pot, and the winner takes the pot and donates it and submits for matching funds. That has been one of our biggest successful things with the board games. Another one is, uh, like, he'll do Munchkin League, and he'll sell the cheats for donations. <laughs> or in Dungeons & Dragons, you can donate to make someone re-roll the die, for example. Do you see people being more spoilers or trying to help the players? The dynamic changes very rapidly. I mean, if the players are stomping on the bosses, people will donate just to spite them. <laughs> but I mean, if it goes, it goes the other way around too. But gotcha. it's it's very. If it's your friend playing, you're going to want to screw with them, just right? Because you can. Well, and I imagine it probably changes from game to game because, like, if we're talking about Munchkin, the concept of supporting another player practically doesn't exist. No. We are very backstabby when it comes to Munchkin, too. It's it's particularly bad. And yet you all seem to still be friends. We're still friends. That doesn't mean we can't be backstabby. We're, we're, we're gamers. We, we can understand the disassociation between stabbing in a game and stabbing in real life. Right. Keep the, keeping the grudges on a gaming level. Yeah. In fact, one of our, one of our core rules when playing is um, don't trust Lance. <laughs> Specific to Munchkin. He is probably one of he's one of our best Munchkin players and is very good at turning help into an <laughs> unstoppable advantage for himself. <laughs> and when it comes to the Frag Force events themselves, what are what are the formats like? Are they still like twenty four hour marathons? Uh, not in our office since the first event when like I was falling asleep at hour twenty three while streaming a horrible horrible game. Um, my top donor got to pick which game I played for the last hour. So I got to play uh, Secret of the Magic Crystals for an hour. Gotcha. Which is, a, I'd have to just look it up. It's, it's just bad. Were you driving a pony around or something? A yes. Track? Yeah. Wasn't it a Barbie game? Effectively. <laughs> okay. That was, that was the game that made me figure out how to actually remove a game from my Steam account. You can do that. <laughs> can do what? <laughs> you can actually remove a game permanently from your Steam account. All right. right. Is is that the uh, gamer of many games equivalent of like removing stuff from your browser history? (laughs) No, it's just I didn't want to have to see it ever again. (laughs) In this case, it used to be um, you could uh, gift games to other people Uh, and they couldn't get rid of them. Got it. So, you know, you find uh, something very uh, opposite of what that person would ever touch in a gaming situation Gift mm-hmm. it to them, and now they're all embarrassed about it because they literally can't delete it from their Steam account. <laughs> but they changed that a while ago, God, unfortunately. You still have to go through a number of hoops. You have to know what to look for to do it. Yeah, but it's possible. And let's talk about you know how things have gone to or where they are now year over year. So you had your first event, $7,000 raised, and now you're across 15 different sites. You're international. What is Fright Force producing both from a VTO hours and also like dollars donated year over year? Uh, last year, about two thirds of the way through the year, we passed the half a million dollars total raised point. Wow. So, I mean, just to give you, you know, an exponential growth figure there. 
So our first year between the two, Portland and Herndon, we raised 15000 Our second year, it was 96000 I was saying another big thing that definitely helps is the Top 100 grant, which several of us have earned twice now. And explain that in, in some detail. Um, Salesforce has a special program for like the top 100 volunteers across the entire company for a fiscal year. They give them a $10,000 grant for any charity they choose, or up to two, split, whichever way you'd like. And then um, two years ago, Paulson, Parker, and I, all three qualified for that. Nice. And then all three of us also got it for the last year because you're only eligible every other year. And let's talk a little bit about the tech that's been required to get that um, global approach. For instance, Parker, I think you're working on getting a, like a global streaming team together, like something that's that's more organized for streaming across the world. Hey, uh, one more time, because I was trying to listen to the sentence and my brain refused to parse it. I was actually focused. <laughs> it's because you, were, because you were responding to Discord at I the was. same time. <laughs> because of course Heather, y'all are Heather, on Discord Heather while you're doing asked this. a question. You know who I'm talking about. Three different people have asked questions about. It's like, wait, there's there's a podcast. Sorry, but but for Salesforce sorry. devs. So I was actually trying to listen and type literally three letters, and it threw me off. <laughs> nope. This is uh, I have this very expected behavior from interviewing a, a three gamers at the same time. So totally understandable. But no, the question was about um, trying to organize some kind of global streaming team. Yeah. So I have a a dream scenario, which I, I call the frag force super stream, which is something like a literally three and a half day long event where it starts like halfway through Friday and doesn't end until like halfway through Monday. Um, and that would be like people rotating in through their time zones. Right. But it's also that the yeah. stream never goes down and it literally hands smoothly, like, like legitimately the stream never goes down and it hands smoothly between teams. And from a technical back end, it's really hard to do that mm -hmm. and we're Oops. working on it, but that's, <laughs> that's my, my long goal pipe dream. I want us to be able to like, you know, the week of frag where it's seven days of solid frag force raising for that week. Wow. Something, um, something insane. So in an elevator pitch, can you describe the technical difficulties there? Um, trying to set up a <laughs> midpoint that everyone can stream to that uh -huh. that that converges everything gotcha part of the problem there as i understand it is some sites need to do their own mixing and then you need to get the streams one or more streams up to the central spot so mm. you can mix between those and stuff like that um, right, Parker? i think i think every site should have the ability to capture local streams and then stream from there from a technical perspective getting a central point that people can stream to that then rebroadcast it to twitch is i could do that in five minutes with an with a docker mm -hmm. container the tricky part is how do i get it so parker can mm -hmm. stream and then i can stream to it and then switch the Smoothly. inputs without any downtime on the Twitch right. side and smoothly. And then trying to figure out how to do that in some sort of an automated fashion where Parker doesn't have to be awake for 24 hours a day to handle the, the switchovers. Those are the kind of technical difficulties that we're still working on. I offered to buy coffee for Parker, but uh, that doesn't I mean, we can, we can inject caffeine directly into Parker, but that only lasts so long. I, yeah, I do true. have a crash point, guys. I'm pretty sure it's somewhere around 47 hours, but... <laughs> We can get more caffeine. No, I, th th I didn't say it'd be a good idea or that you'd survive it, <laughs> but we can get more caffeine. <laughs> and if I want to go somewhere and find out more, like like what's what's involved with the website itself? Well, fragforce.org is uh, hosted on Heroku, which is provided by Salesforce. We use the site. It's actually uh, kind of read-only. There's no way to input data to the site directly okay. um, all of it comes from our salesforce org so we sync over event data participant data limited participant data like counts and mm -hmm. stuff and how to register urls that sort of thing and we sync that over to heroku using heroku connect and then we display that data on the site and so that's where I can find out if there's an upcoming event that I either want to donate or or possibly participate in. Yep, there's there's an events button on the top that'll tell you all upcoming events, and that's synced directly from our or instance. 
And that's our show. I want to thank the Frank Forest guys for a great conversation. Of course, all of the hard work that they are doing for children's charities around the world. Now, to re- just reiterate that last point, you do not need to be a Salesforce employee, of course, to participate. If you want to join the Frank Forest team, head on over to fragforce.org where you can see upcoming events and how to register yourself. Now, before we go, it turns out that Parker is actually quite the baker. And when he headed off to Extra Life United, well, he wanted to make sure he was showing proper etiquette. Yeah. So um, last year was my first Extra Life United, which is Extra Life's big thing that they do. Everybody goes to Orlando to play video games in competitions to hopefully win prizes for their hospital. Mm, Nice. And um, as a let's show up and let let me introduce myself in you know a way only i can kind of thing <laughs> we made a thousand cookies oh wow i and mean technically if you're going to arrive i guess you you were supposed to have enough for everybody right and i made enough to have three for everybody so if you run into parker at extra life united he might just have a cookie for you or maybe even three who knows Thanks for listening, everybody. If you want to learn more about this podcast, head on over to developer.salesforce.com slash podcast, where you can hear old episodes and also see the transcripts and show notes. Plus, we have links to your favorite podcast service. Thanks again, and I'll talk to you next week.